was uh, in the vicinity of Tokyo. I was about an hour south of Tokyo in a town called Zushi. So you were still able to feel the effects of the earthquake up in Sendai down there? Yes, yeah, so even down there it was a pretty sizable earthquake, uh, six or seven on the, on the Richter scale. And I was, I've been in Japan a number of times uh, over the years, and I have been through a number of earthquakes, but that was probably the strongest one I've felt. I've actually never been in an earthquake. What, what does it feel like? What, I guess, I mean, I know the general idea, the ground shakes, the ground is moving, but what does it really feel like to be in one? What is one's well, thought I, process? I've always through? been in, in a building, when, I think, when I've been in earthquakes, and uh, this particular one, I was walking down a hallway of a five-story building, and uh, in front of a big bank of windows. And it was really shaking, um, you know, like this table does right here. It was really uh, very visibly shaking. You could almost, uh, you could certainly stand up, but uh, you felt like you wanted to hold on to something. And there was a handrail there that I held on to. And then uh, since it was in front of a big bank of glass windows, I thought it was better to walk uh, to a better location or go to a better location, so I went down to a stairwell and waited there uh, until the earthquake was over. And it lasted for, it seems like, a couple of minutes. And it just seemed like it wasn't going to stop. And then after that, we had a blackout that lasted for about five hours. And when it got dark, we had to, you know, I was uh, staying in a condominium and we had to operate by candlelight and by flashlight. And oh, wow. So was Tokyo Power pretty good about getting powers, power back quick? I mean, five hours, is that... That seems pretty decent. I mean, to yeah. me, from being from a hurricane-prone state that we lose power pretty regularly, five hours, is that about a decent amount of time, or is that pretty that good? Was, uh, I would say that was for an earthquake. That's actually a little bit unusual. That gives an indication of the magnitude of the earthquake. Is I'm sure I've been through six or eight substantial earthquakes in my time. I lived in Japan in the 1980s and, and went through a number of earthquakes. And this was the first one that I remember that there was a serious blackout that lasted that long. And so I think it was a, an indication of how severe the earthquake was. And they have a tsunami warning system that would give this, this very loud alarm. And then there would be a, a voice that would come over, a loudspeaker, and an, and make some announcement about the possibility of a tsunami coming in and that you should stay away from the beach. And so uh, we heard those announcements for, for days, uh, right after the earthquake and also for days following the earthquake. Right. In general, Japan gets about a third of its power from nuclear power plants, and Japan is also located along uh, earthquake fault lines. And... Um, much of that power, the city of Tokyo, comes from those uh, nuclear power plants in central Japan, which were affected. And we know now that a, a, a few of those reactors have been knocked out permanently. Post-traumatic stress syndrome will be a factor for many, many people in central Japan and northern Japan. Uh, and after all, uh, many thousands of people lost their homes or had severe damage to their homes. and. Uh, there's going to be infrastructural problems in that region for a long time. So therefore, reminders of the trauma of the earthquake. And I would suspect that many people, uh, if, if they were not directly affected, know, at least know of people who were lost or, or severely, or lost their home, or severely uh, injured in the earthquake. Uh, however, I think this uh, event demonstrates that even though they had a plan A, for safeguarding their nuclear reactors, and even though they had a plan B, unfortunately they didn't have a plan C because plan A and plan A and plan B failed in this case. So this is perhaps a lesson for not just the Japanese, but for perhaps all of us, that if you're going to build nuclear power plants and such facilities along earthquake fault zones, that uh, we need to be better prepared. Do you think that it's a bad idea to have a nuclear power plant? In such, a near, I mean, really near the ring of fire? Well, I think in this time of energy shortages and concerns about how we're going to generate more energy, I think that there's still a major role to play for 
nuclear power plants. I just think that we need to put more emphasis on, on safeguards and backup plans.